What's going on, guys? It's Crappy with another Guardian Spotlight, this time on the Enchanter Ori. Uh, Ori, as an Enchanter, has the hardest hitting abilities in the game. All of his abilities can affect multiple targets, allowing him to be one of the best Guardians at crowd control and killing enemy soldiers. For the loadout with Ori, I usually run my usual potions, which is a healing potion, three experience potion, my usual commands, which consists of healing, summon archers, healing totem, smite. They tend to work well with him. I don't usually use the healing totem or the smite, but I am always using my heal and my archers. For the belt, I run Fell Rider's Relic because he is insane at cleaning out creep waves. You can walk into a creep wave, hit your A ability and then your X ability, and just destroy an entire creep wave, giving you anywhere from 50 to 70 ability power depending on how many soldiers are in that creep wave. With Ori, it's all about spamming your abilities because his passive allows you to gain one ability power per ability use. So at level 14, I put in the Wisdom Relic, allowing me for every ability use to get one second off my cooldown. This is really good because you can get your super back insanely fast because when you hit an ability while they're targeted by your A ability, you get your A ability back. Which is really this whole long mumble jumble that I'll get into when we're over the gameplay. For the gems I run in every sapphire spot, I run ability power, and in every amethyst spot, I run ability cooldown reduction. This is just because, like I said, he's an enchanter, you want the ability power and you want the cooldown so you can be using your abilities as much as possible. Ori's abilities really revolve around him spamming them as much as possible. Ori's passive allows him to gain one ability power per ability use. So spam his abilities as much as possible, damn it! This can be a key factor in long games because there is no cap on ability power. Every ability use makes you stronger and stronger and stronger, allowing you to be this walking death machine of ability power late game. Ori's bottom ability is his focus point. This ability ticks for 8 damage over time at level 1 for 10 seconds. At max, this ability will tick for 32 damage over 10 seconds. This ability not only does that, but amplifies his other abilities. So you want to make sure your enemies are affected by it before using other abilities. Also, when you hit an enemy who is affected by this ability with another ability, it's immediately reset, allowing you to hit them with it again. This allows for some serious strategy with Ori and when to cast what ability. Ori's left ability is his instant damage ability. This ability hits very hard. When casted, it instantly damages any enemies within its radius. If the enemy is marked by as it's written, his bottom ability, it does even more damage, hitting for over 200 damage at max without ability power. Ori's right ability is his shield. This ability really doesn't do too much until late game when you have huge amounts of ability power because at max, it only shields for around 200 damage for 5 seconds. However, when you have high ability power, this ability becomes much, much more viable as it has a 0.5 AP ratio. I would still level this last, but don't count it out. At low levels, it can take just enough damage to allow you to escape whatever conflict you may be in, and make sure you're spamming it as much as possible so you can get that high ability power that you want. Alright, with Ori, it's all about knowing when and where to hit the abilities. I knew that they were marked by as it's written, so I knew that they would be able to get killed by my X ability, so I hit them with it right there. Right here, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, because I was kind of scared of Burt, because, you know, he is Burt. Blows the heal, he hits my friend, which was kind of my fault for not being around there, shooting him, doing what I needed to do. I run away, because I'm low on health. You never, ever want to pursue somebody when you're low on health with them. I had to blow my heal, because I was pretty sure he was going to mutton me. And then I go back, and I believe I get him. Regardless, with, with Ori, you want to focus more on staying back, hitting the creep, stuff like that. The combo I usually use is I hit my A ability... Then I hit my B ability, my A ability again because I got it back, my X ability, which kills them. Then I have my A ability still readied, should anybody pursue me, and I just gained 4 ability power and killed a creep wave, which, if I hit my past level 8, I gain from my uh, relic, the Fell Rider's relic. Right here, I'm always blowing my shield whenever I can if I'm taking any sort of damage. Right there is showing how the dot can work. The dot is really underestimated. People don't realize how much damage that thing can really do. Don't usually upgrade it first. I upgrade it second. I upgrade his instant damage removal first because no one knows how powerful that is. Okay, right here, I'm going to show you the effect that Ori can have in a team fight. He just is constant either. You can use your ultimate to stun them. But in that case, we had Oogluk under the tower, so I knew that we had a bunch of CC. So I knew that he was going to hold them under that super, so I was just hitting the damage on it. Getting out of the range of the tower, because it's never a good thing. We do end up getting a complete wipe from that, due to the fact of Sauron's ult. Take down this tower, and then this is game over for them. That, that wipe was just it. Icing on the cake, so to say. 
Now this Bert, I don't know what this Bert's thinking. He's level 8, we're all level 11. He's coming in here, he's trying to mutton my little ass. We believe we get him and then I go down after this because the rest of the team does spawn in. I try to cast my ultimate like I'm going to do something when there's four of them there. Guess he seed out of it and that's the end of that. Right here I hit that cap of 300 off of the Fell Riders Relic. Help my team win a little bit of a team fight. And then we're going to go start making the final push towards the last tower. The one thing I want to really get across is, is with Ori, he does not have high basic attack damage as an enchanter. His quills don't hit for anything. And the abilities cannot do damage to towers, so I really recommend running him if you're running in a party of a couple people with decent structure damage, maybe some strikers or warriors or whatever, really. Because you can't be that one lane pusher, that whatever. You cannot carry a team in that aspect. If your team can do the structure damage, you can carry them in damage, but you cannot do the structure damage that you need to do. So really just take note of that if you're going to run him. But... If you're running skirmishes, just fun, whatever, he is absolutely just one of the most fun characters I've ever played. Originally, I was going to do a guide to Gandalf. I'm sure I told a couple of you that. That changed because, well, Gandalf's Gandalf, and in this game, he is just absolutely atrocious. Has lower AP ratios than half the warriors as an enchanter. It's just not going to happen. I apologize for that. Maybe one day I'll do a Gandalf guide, but he isn't too fun. And in my opinion, is the obvious weakest of the enchanters. Just, like I said, the AP ratios are far too low. But this is Ori's guide, not Gandalf's pick and chew. So I'm gonna leave that rest. As this video comes to an end, I do quickly show you how much ability power I have at 496 ability power. Which is through the nose, considering I only have one relic revolving around ability power. If you really want to stack that straight AP, if you don't see the point in the wisdom's relic... I recommend taking it out for the Black Gate Relic, which allows your shield to do a lot more, and if your shield is active, you have 140 extra ability power, which can make you even more of a death machine than you already are. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. This is insane, the, the, the response I got on the Rune Sig Guide, which if you did not watch, I'm going to put an annotation on the screen right about here. And the support was fantastic. I hope this support's fantastic with this video. If you did enjoy, please leave a like. Not only does it help me out, but it makes me warm and fuzzy on the inside. And subscribe for more Guardians of Middle-Earth guides, videos, whatever I can come up with. And let me know in the comments who you want next. I was thinking maybe another enchanter in the form of Luke Bull or a warrior or something. So we'll see where that goes. Alright, and most importantly, I want to make sure that everybody here has a very crappy day. Victory!